Hey everyone, Brian with WorkshopAddict.com and today we are going to see if the Milwaukee M18 Fuel Super Sawzall Reciprocating Kit model number 2722-21HD is worth the money that you're going to pay for it. Is it going to do the heavy duty jobs? Is it going to be what you need to take your job site to the next level? Flat out, if you're buying this saw, I'm going to tell you right now, it's heavier, it's about 12 pounds with a battery, it's got a lot of options that are easy to use, and it doesn't have one key. You don't need to get your phone out to change things. So flat out, this is meant for a job site. If you're going to work over your head constantly and complain about how heavy it is, then you probably don't need the power. If you pick it up and say, hey, there's a little bit of vibration here, Dude, that's because it's 3,000 SPM and an inch and a quarter stroke. This thing's kicking ass here, so if you don't want that, don't pick it up. If you want something that's very hard to stall, that's got all the power in the world, and it's a tool that you're gonna use in those tough situations, here it is, and let me prove to you why. Now, we started out with simple new blades into some wood. We're going through some two by tens, showing you the oscillating mode. You can cut through two by tens like butter. You're gonna just go right through them. You know, that's a simple test. It's a new blade and it's a saw. We could do that with any saw. So we wanna pull out a six by six. Again, this is not a tough test, a brand new blade. Going through the six by six, again, it's cutting like butter through this thing. It is simply diving through, and of course we have a Milwaukee carbide tip blade on here, and you expect nothing less. But when you switch this guy over away from the oscillating mode, and you have this much lumber that's sitting there, you start to see, wow, that oscillating mode makes a huge difference in the speed of the cut. So we're sitting there trying to finish off that cut with this in the normal mode, and it's acting like the blades dull, but that's not it guys. It is the amount of oscillation you get out of this tool with that inch and a quarter stroke that's kicking it through. Now you can see a huge difference in the amount of vibrations that are felt in the handle from the two by 10, which is also caused by the um, vise that's hanging out of the wood moving around, and the six by six. Flat out this thing does cause some vibration to come back to you when in oscillating mode. If you expect this to ride like a Cadillac, don't buy an F-250. Flat out. This saw is meant for heavy duty work. It's going to give you vibrations in oscillating mode. When you turn it off, oscillating mode, you can see those calm right down and it's very easy to use. And we moved over to a anti-sway bar that we took off one of the Jeeps that we used and we're doing some metal cutting here. It's awesome. It's easy to change the speed that's right up on the upper handle. You have a variable selector dial that limits the top speed of the variable speed trigger. So I can tune this into whatever I want to get that cut just how I want it. We're not testing blades here. Let's be real. We're testing the saw. So screw how we want it. We're putting way more pressure on this than what is, should, or could be done on any other saw. I have easily every ounce of body weight that I can put on this thing without losing my balance and falling over. And this saw is still kicking. This saw is still going. And I'm doing this over and over and over, totally destroying the blade, but trying to prove to you that stopping this saw is next to impossible. Moving on from there, we went into some round tubing, getting, it, getting the blade that we had in there to cut through that. Dang near impossible because we're just tearing blades up. And you can see that even though we can adjust the adjustable shoe, only one side of the blade is cutting at this point. We can just rotate the saw and cut. But even though we get into this and put a large amount of pressure on it and end up totally destroying the blade, the goal of this is to show you that it is dang near impossible to stall the saw out. And that is what people who are doing heavy duty demolition want. You don't want to get this blade stuck in the middle or bound up between two pieces of lumber and you can't get it out. This thing, 10 for 10 on everything that you have here. Now, during this situation of what we're doing, changing blades, going through everything, I wanted to note that there is not a quick 
adjustment or quick blade change in the front of this. It is the older style where it is a uh, shaft and quick change system. Who cares how easy it is to change the blade on this to a point because you want the best system to hang on to that blade when you have this much power. So yes, some points when this Sawzall has the system fully retracted and that shaft is all the way inside, it's a little bit tough to get in there and put the blade in because that spring is so tight, but you need that to hold that blade in. We have not had one situation where the blade came out and that's gonna include this next test, which was sand hell. We threw this thing down in our driveway and started cutting up the gravel and just getting into the sand below it. There is a lot of different sands that are on top of it. We are just cutting through it, shoving sand into every single vent. And as you can probably see or have seen in some of the pictures and what's going on, this thing is covered in sand. This is how I see a lot of our concrete contractors working. These tools are covered in anything you can imagine from dirt, sand, concrete, dust. They, they look horrible, but they're still working. And that's the end game here. After going through shoving sand through all this, working through everything, this thing is still working just like it's new. The blade change system, no issue. Moving the shoe in and out, no issue. Variable speed trigger is good. Variable speed dial works. Can go to oscillation and back, no problem. Again, over time, you know, over a year, that's what's gonna show how good this tool is. But the reality is, short term, we can fill it up with sand, keep it running. The shaft in front had no issue binding up with stones or sand or anything that was constantly being shoved in there. Performance has been awesome. One of the things that one of my contractors brought up to me lately is employees and how he's having a hard time finding good employees, people that are thinking while they're on their toes and he's having a lot of tools getting run over, especially tools that he feels the, you, the employees feel are older and they want new ones. So great test, throw this behind a truck tire and let's run it over. It, and it survives, no issue. Better than that, let's park the truck on it for a minute. Because, of course, we do social media, we got to get pictures, right? So park the truck on it, take some pictures. On the way off, give the truck a little bit of gas, spit this guy out. Zero issues with anything. No cracking. No, the only thing that happened that I will say, you know, changed the look of this, is there is a sticker on the back. It is more of a foil sticker. It's got serial number, the model number on it. That is half peeled off. That is the only thing that happened to this tool. Completely, still fully usable. Functions exactly as it's supposed to. We've tried that with a lot of other tools. And we do it at the end of a video before everything's done. A lot of times they break. We've run over stuff with larger, you know, tandem trailers, dump trucks, you know, that stuff happens, but at the same point, this kicks ass. If you're looking for something that's gonna hold up on the job site, something you can drop, something you can use constantly, something that's gonna last a long time because this 12.0 amp hour battery that's behind it is giving out a ton of power. And we ran this over with the battery attached. We didn't pull it off. You know, the only problem that I see when it's attached is we get some sand inside of there and you have to push really hard on both of those release levers to get it off. Other than that, this thing's perfect. Once you slide it off the first time, the sand comes out, you can put it on, off, on, off, no issue. This Sawzall, to me, proved a huge point. If Milwaukee wants to make a tool that is gonna go out there and they can call it super, they can call it heavy duty, they can call it whatever they want. If they're gonna make a tool that you can go out, run over, bury in sand, put all your body weight into and try to stall and say, hey, this is one cool tool that if you wanna go out and use in a heavy duty situation, it's gonna have your back. They can do it, flat out. So if you're looking for something like that, this is it guys. If you're looking for something that you're gonna prune trees with or you're gonna put this in your toolbox and go, I got the baddest saws all out here, you're probably not gonna like it. If, if weight's a thing for you, it's heavy. 
if vibration's a thing for you, it's got power, and if you let that shoe get off the wood or anything like that, it's going to shake you around. It's gonna, it's ready to do work. This is the F250, F350, F550 of the Sawzall world right now, and if you're not ready to take that beating, go buy a Cadillac. So if you're looking for a heavy-duty saw, check this out. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, guys. We have a lot of cool things going on. We appreciate it. I also want a ton of your comments below about what I'm saying about this saw. If you disagree, I want to know. Also, watch out for our giveaways. Follow us on social media. Have a great day.